what I'd like to do is just start here briefly and then move over uh, and describe what uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to not only present the oral testimony that I did, but to provide a demonstration of some basic scientific concepts of ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is a global scale change in the basic chemistry of the oceans that is underway now as a direct result of the increases in, of CO2 in the atmosphere. We are just beginning to understand the impacts of ocean acidification on life in the ocean. The moniker osteoporosis of the sea gives you a hint about some of its impacts. The basic chemistry of ocean acidification is understood and is not controversial. Here are three basic concepts. Number one, the chemistry of the oceans is dependent upon the chemistry of the atmosphere. More CO2 in the atmosphere means more CO2 in the ocean. Number two, as CO2 from the air is dissolved into the ocean, it makes the oceans more acidic. The resulting changes, number three, in the chemistry of the oceans disrupt the ability of plants and animals in the sea to make shells and skeletons of calcium carbonate. And those chemical changes also dissolve shells that are already formed. So who in the oceans is affected by this? Any plant or animal that has a shell or a skeleton made of calcium carbonate. The hard parts of many familiar animals, such as oysters, clams, corals, lobsters, crabs, such as those on this table, and those on the posters, are made of calcium carbonate. Many microscopic plants and animals at the base of the food chain also have calcium carbonate shells or skeletons. Some of these microscopic plants and animals are so abundant that when they die, they form massive deposits as they accumulate on the seafloor. The famed White Cliffs of Dover are a familiar example of calcium carbonate, or chalk, deposits, the skeletons of microscopic organisms. More acidic ocean water is corrosive to all of these calcium carbonate shells and skeletons, but let me focus on two quick examples. Number one, corals that provide the fundamental structure for the world's treasured coral reefs make their skeletons with calcium carbonate. More acidic ocean water makes it harder for corals to make their hard parts. If the ocean becomes too acidic, coral reefs may well disappear. Pteropods, number two, also called sea butterflies, are small shelled animals about the size of a lentil bean. They occur in the millions off the coast of my home state of Oregon, but also throughout the world's oceans. They are a key or the primary source of food for juvenile salmon and many other fish around the world. Pteropods are particularly susceptible to increasingly acidic ocean water, as you'll see in a moment. And I mention them in part because they illustrate the broader consequences of disruption of one part of the ocean ecosystem reverberating throughout other parts of the system, potentially affecting jobs, food security, tourism, and more. The severity of ocean acidification's impacts is likely to depend in part on the interaction of acidification with other environmental stresses, such as rising ocean temperatures, overfishing, and pollution from the land. Early evidence suggests that some species are better able to thrive in increased acidity, but the adaptability of most organisms to increased acidity is unknown. While our understanding of ocean acidification's impacts are still unfolding, the basic science of how the ocean is acidifying and the effects of increased acidity on some marine organisms is well known. And I'd like to now demonstrate two of the basic concepts that I just mentioned. The ocean does a great service. The ocean does a great service by absorbing tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And in fact, the oceans have absorbed already about a third of the carbon dioxide that humans have contributed to the atmosphere over the last two centuries. This greatly reduces the impact of these heat trapping pollutant gases on the earth. But the carbon dioxide that is absorbed by oceans changes the chemistry of seawater, making it more acidic and more corrosive. When carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid, making the water more acidic. And to illustrate how this occurs, I brought a vessel of water 
some common laboratory blue dye that changes color as the acidity in the solution changes, and some dry ice, which is simply compressed, frozen carbon dioxide. So I will first squirt some of this dye into the pitcher of water. Swirl it around a little bit. Actually, I was going to do that in this, wasn't I? I will put it in here. Thank you, John. Okay, I'm just going to add a little more dye here. that microphone over. Do we need the microphone? Can I project without it? Okay. So uh, I squirted a little bit of this dye into the water. Uh, you can see the blue color, which indicates that this solution is a neutral level of acidity. And to demonstrate that the water absorbs carbon dioxide and that it then becomes more acidic, I'm just going to drop a few chunks of this carbon of uh, dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide, into the water. And you can see that the water changes color from blue to yellow, telling you that it has become more acidic. I've used tap water to demonstrate this concept, but the same phenomenon happens with seawater as with tap water. As it absorbs carbon dioxide, it the carbon dioxide changes into carbonic acid and becomes more acidic. Over the last two centuries,